Have you ever seen a man on a dating app say he's looking for someone with a good sense of humor? Because in this very well-known study, they found that when women said they wanted someone with a good sense of humor, they meant someone who will make them laugh. But when men said they wanted a woman with a good sense of humor, they meant a woman who will laugh at their jokes. In every other context other than friendship, men preferred women who would laugh at their jokes over women who would make jokes themselves. And that's like the least surprising thing ever, but it's kind of funny to have empirical scientific data to back it up. What is it though? Is it that men are like threatened by funny women? How old are you? I am 42. What does it feel like to be 42? Exhausting all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. I've learned a lot over the years, but it's just exhausting. I'm working all the time and yeah. just trying to find time to balance life. Does it feel differently than when you were in your 30s and 20s? Uh, I thought I was invincible when I was in my 30s and 20s, and I'm clearly not. Did you have like a moment that kind of hit and you realized you weren't invincible? Uh, no, not really. Just over time, just started to realize it. What is one thing that when we're younger, we tend to prioritize, but as we get older, we realize isn't actually that important? Uh, probably money. Uh, realize that over time, family, friends, experience is more important. Is there a reverse, like something that we don't prioritize enough when we're in our 20s that we should? Uh, time. What should we do? Uh, just enjoy it more and like yeah. really live in, in the moment. Most men find most women to be at least somewhat attractive. In contrast, women on average view 80% of men as below average in attractiveness. Another study found that on the dating app Tinder, men liked more than 60% of the female profiles they viewed, while women liked only 4.5% of male profiles. I didn't realize that 80% of men as below average. That's quite yeah, off. It is because, you know, you would think like 50%, right? It's sort of like 50% above and 50% below, but to have 80% rated below is pretty grim. Because of the increased risk women carry, they tend to be choosier about their partners. In contrast, men are less discerning. Studies of online dating, for example, find that a lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend. That's why you're in sex work, because you can't offer value in the marketplace. What the fuck? Don't worry, I'm not really talking to you. I'm speaking against you as a symbol. A symbol of what? A symbol of a declining society where people gotcha. lack values. Mm -hmm. So the point is this. If you had IQ and skills mm -hmm. to offer to the marketplace, gotcha. you can earn a good income. Being that the most valuable thing about you is mm -hmm. something that you never earned. You didn't earn knowledge, you didn't earn skills. It's your breast that you paid for and your butthole. So you market that to earn money, which is to say, if I took your brain and placed your brain into a man's body, you would be in poverty. I'm just good for nothing. Yep, you can't No, you are good for something. That's why you have OnlyFans. And that's my point is that well, that's what you're good yeah. for. Like really what we're talking about is, is the female experience, which you can't speak to. Yeah, but I can speak to the male experience. The male experience, I would think, would be able to speak much more highly as to how many men would actually be determined to do some harm to you if you were in the middle of a forest and they came across you in the forest. You're right, but this is a podcast of women and we're talking about women, so that's why. Well, it's a podcast of women, but there's a, clearly men on the panel. It's not our job to kiss your ass because you're a woman. I'm, I'm having an adult conversation with you. I don't know why I need to look at everything from feminist standpoint theory or from your perspective when you so easily dismiss mine. I'm telling you that your number's absurd. It makes no sense. And as you retract it, you very quickly retracted it because you realized how absurd it was. Why would you say that I have to be a woman in order to speak to this? That's, that seems insane. I'm quite literally rolling around in a horse shit, trying to get, trying to get this, this bottom thing off my car. Mm, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to cry. I'm trying to get this off and they need a, I need a screwdriver to get I just, I just wish someone would, would pull over and help me because I don't know what to do. Oh, someone just pulled over, no way! Thank you so much. The strong independent woman who don't need no man actually does need a man. Why am I not surprised? It's really interesting to note that, you know, especially within the States, but just in general, the research actually has depicted that women in their 40s is the most unhappiest age group out there. Think about that. The unhappiest age group in all of the world, predominantly we're talking about the states right now, is women in their 40s. That's one in four Americans, which is crazy. That's 25% of the population are women in their 40s. 
and they're the unhappiest group out there. And it's just absolutely scary and it's appalling. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? And at the end of the day, the number one reason why, well, there could be many reasons why actually. But one of them, as I mentioned beforehand, is it's really all about e-commerce. It's about the pharmaceutical industries. It's about really just making money. It's a multi-million dollar business for the, for the most part. Yeah. Okay, real quick for the ladies. I'm going to describe a regular man for you. And I want you to tell me if you would marry this man. Okay. I don't want to Five foot eight, about 30, 35 to 50K per year. Would you marry that? Hell, hell no. no. He's below the poverty line. What are you talking about? The poverty is, line is actually far no, less than that. Yes. But, uh, what's below what's the, average man, the average man in the United States today is about five foot eight okay. and makes somewhere between 35 to 50 thousand dollars per year five yeah. foot eight is fine but i don't know about so the real quick raise your hands how many of you guys would marry that man raise your hands if you would marry him yes or no i don't even know any man okay hold on so no one at the table would marry this man right no one? Um, okay congratulations you and a thousand other girls plus we've interviewed yeah. said the same, same exact thing, thing. No. so it goes back to what i said you said oh oh well, most girls most girls are going to get a regular man no, most girls don't even view regular men as a part as yeah. members of society or an option. Yeah. yeah, most girls want extraordinary men. Exactly where to find your future wallet. <laughs> I mean, rich husband in New York City. The key to finding Mr. Right is knowing all the right places to eat. Head on over to Michael's, the hotspot for media tycoons in Manhattan. Mike McCarty hosts there about every other week. Shake his hand and he could introduce you to the potential love of your life, a future hot Mark Zuckerberg. Just make your way to table one, trust me. You're on a date with a Brooks brother and he takes you here, you know you're set. What's better than a one-way private charter to the Hamptons? You may not find your billionaire's romance here, but it's a five minute walk from Wall Street. With luck, if you go late enough, you might find an accountant at the bar wasting his life way over a glass of bourbon. What are you waiting for, honey? He's waiting for you to join us. If you're college age or cougaring for a pre-finance boy before the millions, take to Gold Plaza. They often have events, you can ask for directions, and who knows, you might find the future Mr. Big to your carry. Thanks for watching. This is disgusting. Women always complain about men seeing them as a piece of meat. But at the same time, they see men as a tool to fund their lifestyle. As long as that man got money, they will do anything. How's that any different than a sex worker? The logic is just not adding up. Tips on how to find a rich husband. As a gold digger, I like helping women who want a soft life like me. Hi, I'm Mrs. White, your master of luxury. Unclench your jaw. Smile. Close your legs until he does something big for you. Always smell good. Stop chasing and start attracting. Dress classy. Speak softly. Find areas where people with old money hang. Short nails. Download LinkedIn. For more info, go book your master class on Instagram at Mrs. No, underscore no, white no. triple eight. Now, go find rich husband, baby. You know I that I'm out on the dating scene, I have to say that one of the best places that you would not think of that you can meet someone organically is at the park. Let me just say, I've been stopped three times while I'm reading at the park and the go-to line every single time has been what book are you reading what is it about and then it'll start conversation unfortunately i have not been attracted or it, the guy has not been my type but it is a good place to potentially meet somebody go to your local park just sit there read listen to music go on a walk and you don't know who's gonna come up to you and just start a conversation okay on a serious note where do like the 28 year old single men hang out at? Because no, like 28 to like 30. <laughs> You're so right. We're bopping around the West Village and I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Your eyes are peeled. <laughs> but I'm not finding them. So if you're 28 and single, there ha where you live in New York, <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard to find. You're 31 and getting a divorce because you don't like him. Yeah, I fell out right? of love with him. I think we just went to. Okay, but ways. do you have any children? No, thank God. Uh, well, <laughs> and you've been with him since how old? Since I was 18, but we got okay, married well, at 20. All right. And what do you think's waiting for you out here? Mm, 
new possibilities. That's one way to frame it. He's, he's ready for kids. I'm not ready for kids. I worked hard for my degree and my career. Why should I have to give it up? Especially oh, when I don't have any kids. Okay. Ah, so your husband wanted you to stay home and you know, so and you wanted to go to work. Yes. Well, Kevin, I work, I'm a nurse. Congratulations. Um, that matters. I not. work with a but listen, I work with a lot of doctors at So Sweet. What? Ladies, 2023, I'm convinced I'm going to meet my man at the grocery store. And here's why I say this. When I go to the bar, it's a great romance. Whirlwind fizzles out in days, okay? Grocery store, I'm coming back from work. You know, I'm in my, I'm in like girlfriend attire, okay? Obviously, I wouldn't wear a turtleneck to the bar. But I think I'm looking cute. Wholesome energy. Perfect time to both reach for an apple, okay? And then go, oh my God, so sorry you take it. And then chat, spark up a conversation conversation i mean like i actually have to like do that um but i'll let you know if i do i'm just i'm thinking that's going to be the thing for me this year because i only go to the bar like maybe once or twice a week on the weekends but you know i'm at that grocery store multiple times a week more chances okay let me know if you try this or if you have if it's worked for you give us a little inspiration story honey i need it bye never had a boyfriend what? Never. Never? Never in my That's life. That's ridiculous. No. I know, right? Okay, so you're a big sister, you see here. I've been trying with nice guys, with college guys, with humble guys, with everything. Nothing worth. Everybody was just breaking my heart. So you know what? I'm just going with rich guys. Well, at least I'm going to cry in my lips. Okay. Today we are in the most gorgeous and luxury hotel in Beverly Hills. So here's the secret. You don't need to be shy. Nobody cares about you. So just please say the objective. We're gonna try next time. Alexa, remind me that I don't need a man and men are useless. When should I remind you? Every damn day. How to get a rich man's attention. So if you are now walking into nice establishments and you're walking into better places, better hotel bars, members clubs, country clubs, or you're shopping in nicer areas and you see a man that is a possible target, he looks well, he's older, he's dressed very nice, he's about to get into a nice car or whatever, or maybe you're just in, let's, say, let's do, for example, you're in a hotel bar. You're in a hotel bar. What you would do is you don't sit on your phone all day. By sitting on your phone constantly, it makes everyone think that you're there to meet someone. Okay? Do not sit on your phone. It also makes you look unapproachable. Just take in the ambience of the, of the place. You know? Get a drink. <sighs> sit back on the drink. Take in the ambience. Look friendly. Not overly friendly, but... You're enjoying your day. You're having a break. You might be on lunch from work. You're just enjoying yourself. You're taking it in. You're enjoying life every moment, okay? I love my life. And that's more of an approachable look for a man to say, hey, how are you? How's your day? What's a pretty girl like you sitting here alone? Then you give him some spiel, okay? You might want to talk to the barman so people can overhear that you're friendly. Like, hey, how's it going? How's your day? How's your, you been busy? Oh, it's not that busy right now. Oh, thank you. You know, like, so people know that you're friendly and they can approach you. Okay. Also, if you want to do um, eye contact, eye contact is a great way to um, get what you want, you know, and then look away. Okay, and then also, say you're at a grocery store, you're walking down the street, and you say, oh, damn, that man, I know that man has money. I know for a fact that man has money. What you do is you get a napkin, you drop the napkin. You get your handbag, you drop the handbag. If the handbag's expensive, girl, get yourself a replica so you can throw it on the floor. Throw that handbag on the floor right in front of that man. Get your lipstick keys all out on the floor. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, and then he's going to come in with some, you know, some funny dad joke, you know, 
here. You know, it's always nice to have a nice lady. <laughs> You're so sweet. Where are you from? Oh. <laughs> so that's what you're going to do. You're going to pull little tricks like that. Drop a napkin. Drop a handbag. You're going to look around. You're always going to be on the prey. You're always going to be looking around, you know, to see what's out there. Be that type of girl that's always looking for opportunities. And be ruthless. Ruthless. If you want to date a wealthy man with a lot of money, but you don't know where to find them, I'm going to tell you where to go. The first place you're going to go and the first thing you're going to do is put on a really cute hot girl walk outfit and you're going to find a very wealthy neighborhood in your city. You're going to go for a hot girl walk. Next place, whatever city you live in, go to the downtown area, find a really nice high rise condo or apartment. Make sure one of these condos or apartments has a restaurant or a bar on the bottom floor. Go in, sit at the bar, wait and see how many men come up to you. There are so many men that go to the bar by themselves, especially if it's a bar where they already reside. It's looking to buy a pretty girl a drink. The next place you are going to look is exclusive events or conferences. I cannot tell you how many times I've just been at a nice hotel in Miami for an event myself or even just to get drinks with a girlfriend. And all of a sudden there's a huge conference going on with a lot of men go to these conferences. Go to the hotels where these conferences are at because you know what these men do after the conferences? They go get a drink at the bar. Next place you are gonna go if you're trying to find a wealthy man is a high-end bar or a really nice speakeasy. Here down in South Florida, there are speakeasies everywhere. A lot of them are very exclusive. You either have to know someone to get in or you have to have a code to get in. These men just hang out there drinking their whiskey out of the glass, waiting to talk to a pretty girl. Next place you are going to look is a high-end gym. That's where all the daddies go. So if you have an Equinox, next place is gonna be a golf course. I feel like this is just a universally known fact, but all of the wealthy men are into golf. So whether you know nothing about golf and you go and make a fool of yourself with your girlfriends and pretend to know how to golf just to run into men and be like, oh my God, can you teach me? Which brings me to my next point, country clubs. If there's a way you can finesse yourself into getting into a country club, do it. Go to the pool, go to the restaurant, walk the neighborhoods. This is definitely where you're going to meet a wealthy man. The last one on this list for now is a luxury hotel or resort. If you can get yourself into a resort's pool, you are set. The only downside that I will say to trying to find a wealthy man at a luxury resort or hotel is they're probably just visiting. But depending on what you're looking for, that might be ideal. Do people actually like get asked on dates in real life? Like people come up to you, like attractive people that you'd want to go on a date with come up to you and ask you to go on a date and then like they want to take you on a date? That has like literally actually never happened to me in my entire life. The closest thing today, today I was going to get lunch with my friends and I was walking and this like 65 year old man stopped me and goes, Hey, do you happen to be single? And I said, no. And he said, Oh, you're beautiful. He was literally 65 years old. So that's what I get. People go on dates and the people that get asked on the dates and they're, they want to go on the dates and they don't. <laughs> That's crazy, you guys. That's crazy. There's about a 90% chance that when I decide to get married, it'll be with a girl that's not from America. Men are now more objectified than women. They're simply viewed for what they can provide and what they can do for others. So much so that what one man won't do, the next one will. And you're just a DM away from any yacht, plane, or car in the entire world like that. Countries overseas have seemed to do a better job at preserving their culture and sticking to their core values. So much so that if you're looking for a long-term partner and someone that you're actually gonna marry, it makes more strategic sense to marry someone that aligns with those same core values. This guy is actually pretty successful and women have this idea that only the men that are not successful and are broke bums are looking at women from other countries. Here we have a man who is not broke, is not dusty, and yet even he is saying, you know what, I think I'm good on American women. A quick question, where are we meeting the men that actually want to date and be in a relationship? Because it's not the dating apps. It's not. It's not the coffee shops. I've been trying that. I've been trying that for a while now. Definitely not the bars. Not at my age, because they're all like 21, 22, so they definitely don't want to be in a relationship, and I definitely do not want to be a cougar. Nothing wrong with that. 
just not my type. I, again, tend to go about 8 to 10 years older than me. I found out even those don't want to date for a relationship. Even they are still figuring things out. Yeah, they are. So where are we meeting the ones that want to date and be in a relationship? That want to date to eventually get into a relationship? That are dating to see if we're compatible for a relationship, not other things. No, no, no. I need to know because I have yet to find them. <laughs> And I've been looking, so maybe I should stop looking. I don't know. But if you know, please let me know. Help your girl out. Where are we meeting the good men? Where are we meeting the men that actually want to be in a real relationship? Let me know. Okay, PSA to all men. Just because a girl is wearing a low-cut shirt or a tight top or a fitted outfit doesn't give you permission to just stare at their chest. It makes us so uncomfortable. And if you guys could please stop doing it. It would be amazing. Men will always be like, oh, we don't like being called creeps or we're so scared to be called creeps. But then you guys make it so difficult for the female species to exist or even wear anything. Okay, in case you guys didn't hear a word that lady just said, she said, don't be creeps, don't stare at her. No matter what she's wearing, no matter what any other woman is wearing, don't stare. I mean, even if she has like a flamingo on her head, you better not stare. Even though it's like totally human, you know, when somebody is just being totally obvious and flaunting, you know, maybe they're even like dancing with that flamingo. Yeah, you better, you better not look unless you're attractive in her eyes. So like, okay, so it gets a little muddied, I know. So if you're attractive, so, you know, you gotta look at the scale. So if you're maybe an eight or nine or 10, she probably, you know, she's a 10 up there so like you might really need to be a 10 don't look at her unless you're that because we all know yeah where are all the men like the good <laughs> real men at where are you guys i know where are the men that like want to take you on a date like, like i don't hit need... come in my dms right please. <laughs> i don't i don't need dinner though see no. for, you know how some people like first date they want dinner i don't want dinner for the first date because i want to be able to talk without food in my mouth <laughs> yeah even like when guys suggest movies i'm mm -hmm. like why would I go to the movie theaters with you on a first date? No, exactly. Why? Like, you and I could go to the a dark, movie because we like, know each other now. But yeah. if, when we first met... No, I want to talk. All the good men got played, so now all they do is just work, scroll TikTok, chill, and ignore people. Tell me I'm wrong. I just walked into Abercrombie for the first time since middle school. Where are all the hot shirtless dudes? What happened to them? Why did we get rid of them? Okay, so serious question. If we're not going on dating apps for dates, where are we meeting men? And where are we meeting men in which we'd actually want to go on a date with? Where are all of the good guys? Can someone enlighten me? Because <laughs> whatever I'm doing isn't working. Women nowadays will literally be like, I can't find any good men. There are no good men left. And then they'll be like, I just need six feet about like six inches and like six figures. Even if this video was just meant for fun, it's still another case of men acting like women have impossible standards so that they feel better about themselves when they don't meet them. And it bothers me because these guys are acting like women are looking down on men who they would consider less than perfect. But have you ever heard a woman talk about a bum who she's in love with? Cause she'll make every excuse in the world for why that man is incredible and just misunderstood. So let's say for example, that a man has no job. She's not gonna let you sit there and call him unemployed. No, she's gonna tell you how it's probably because no one ever encouraged him and that he's gonna be able to do anything he sets his mind to once she just believes in him. You're acting like women will only date men who make six figures, but I know women who are working two jobs with full insurance and a 401k who are dating men with 60 cents in their bank account because she thinks he has potential. I don't know how you can act like women will only settle for rich men anyways when most families are living paycheck to paycheck and can't survive on one income because I think that means they married for love. And don't even get me started on what's between the legs because there are women in 30 year marriages who have never successfully had a no and you're gonna act like women are out here throwing the whole man away because of his size? Cause I don't think so. In fact, there are women out here faking O's so that the men in their lives don't feel inadequate and yet you're gonna act like we're out here bringing measuring tapes to our coffee dates? And sure, when it comes to height, maybe some women do have a preference for men who can reach the top shelf or the cookie jar, but that's all subject to change. If he's a good man with good qualities, then she may just fall in love and try to convert the whole world talking about how we love a short king. Listen, the truth is that even you don't believe this nonsense because if you really believed that women had impossible standards and you wouldn't be telling them to pick better men at every opportunity. So when I see videos like this, I realize that they're usually not mad about what women want. They're just mad that women don't want them. 
So you said this about me too. So this is probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania. In Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. You go to the police and say he me back in 1988. They'll say, well, you should have done something about it back then. That one small sentence you've taken was from a one hour video where I explained that of course, if it's disgusting, of course, everybody should be punished for their crimes regardless of when they happen. But people are not perfect, male and female. And if you give women the opportunity to destroy men's lives without evidence, there's going to be a contingent of women who will do that. I'm trying to make a balanced and nuanced argument in a world where people have no attention span. They're going to take a few seconds, put it online, decide someone's good or bad, not be interested in the longer format video. We live in a world now with TikTok videos five or six seconds long. There's no comment. So there's this clip going viral online of a dozen women being asked the following question. Do we need men? <laughs> Most answered very quickly, no. <laughs> and only one said she thought women needed a man in their lives, only one. But when men were asked a similar question, do we need women, most of them <laughs> said yes. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Because men are useless. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> love it. And by the way, I want I to differentiate between straight men and gay men, because I think I, I would die without gay men. Nobody can gossip <laughs> like gay men. Nobody can help you accessorize like gay men. Nobody can help you uh, from, keep you from doing harm to, your, to yourself uh, like gay men. But with the exception of somebody like Steve, I think Steve is very self-sufficient. That's Joy's husband. But like, he is. my he is. husband, it takes a village of women to make sure that he's not emaciated, starving, and living in his own filth. He can, really? you know. Yeah. How about um, you no. guys? Well, you guys feel you guys are married I, to people I have that are a, more. I have Handy Manny at home. <laughs> <No>. He <laughs> is. He fixes everything. When things go bump in the night, he's the one that goes downstairs. When there's a bug <clears throat> to be exterminated, he does the extermination. Nope. When there is something to be <laughs> fixed, he fixes it. He throws out the trash Still and he no. throws out the recyclables. <laughs> With your sameness and fairness thing, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, it kind of sounds to me like you want equality as long as it's benefiting women, but when it's not benefiting women and men can take the brunt of it, you're like, that's cool. Like, I'm fine with that. Yeah, how do you see that? How well, do you I mean, see if, you know, that? if we lived in like a properly feminist world, uh -huh. there wouldn't be affirmative action initiatives to mm -hmm. put more women in positions of like workplace positions mm -hmm. and in academic positions. If we had a truly equal world, women, like I said, would get drafted into the military. Like, I think if feminists want to truly fight for equality, it's like, put your money where your mouth is. But if you only want equality when it's benefiting you, then it's not, you don't actually want equality, you just want a world that benefits women more often. Um. Nobody talks about this, but it is very difficult very difficult to be attracted to the person that is good for you. Like good on paper, right? Like they're good. Like you know that this is a good choice for you, but something, something is missing and you don't know what it is. It's that you're looking, most likely, you're looking for that chaotic adrenaline rush that you get when you like the person that is not good for you honestly just grow up that's all this i continue to hear women say nonsense like this i mean she even admitted it she's saying free healing it's hard to stop doing this behavior basically saying that women who do this are injured the other thing a woman doesn't want and no man really want to have around either is a man who's actually weak and unskilled who pretends to be moral and kind not only to cozy up to women, but also to parade his weakness as moral virtue. You know, I'm not the mean guy, I'm not the bad guy. Well, the reason for that is you're too goddamn weak to manage that. And instead of just admitting that forthrightly and doing something about it, you parade it as a moral virtue. So you want to meet a billionaire? Well, the thing about billionaires is that there isn't that many of them, and they tend to like to hang out with each other, which makes them predictable. And conveniently, they have their very own travel schedule, known as the Billionaire Travel Schedule. In September, you'll find them here. August and October here. November. December. And for my US girlies, our Basel and St. Barts are your best bet. Now do with this information as you will. I've realized that this is where you go to meet hot, rich, older guys. I don't have experience with hot, rich, older guys. I am curious, so I'm very observant. I'm open to discovery, you know what I'm saying? And by older, I'm not saying like old. I'm just saying, everyone's always saying happy hour. Everyone's always saying hotel bars. 
at the end of the day, like, am I going to go to a hotel bar? Probably not. Everyone's always saying golf courses. Am I ever, am I going to go to a golf course? Like I joke, but no, haven't been. And what it is, is lunch. They're not talking about lunch, but how come I was in an area yesterday where a lot of people are working, a lot of finance buildings, and I was taken aback by the lunch scene. It was really giving like attractive 30s, 40s guys at lunch. And this is probably way more accessible in New York, but we live in LA. Like, I don't know where, I don't know the scenes, but now I know. Go to a place where people are working and you hit those lunch places at noon. Our school is connected to um, a hospital. So I'm dressed up and there's a lot of real doctors here. So let me just, in case there's a husband. Husband, where you at? Doctor, doctors. <laughs> Doctor, daddies, where y'all at? We're here for y'all. <laughs> Stop. Attention, if you want to be my husband and you live on this road, come outside now. Where is the best place to find a husband? I'll go first. Instagram, and you wanna know why? I don't know about you, but I believe the boy needs to put in the work. Like, boy, chase me, come after me. No, thank you. Like, I'm not trying to play games, but Cinderella did not chase after the prince, uh-uh. You see, when a dude hits you up on Instagram, he has no idea where you live, unless you have it listed in your bio. Chances are, if you don't already know each other, you don't live in the same city. Girl, he's gonna have to buy a plane ticket or drive across the country to come meet you. And that's exactly the kind of effort we want and deserve. So let me tell you, when this guy Jake commented on my Instagram, I added him on Facebook. I didn't want him sliding into my DMs, I wanted him sliding into my Facebook Messenger. We sent lengthy messages back and forth for about two months. He invited me to come up to Northern California and hang out with his family, which was about 10 hours away. I said no, but I'll be in Maui on my family vacation if you wanna come. That boy bought a plane ticket to Maui. I didn't even tell him what time we were flying in. Respond to your Instagram comments, ladies. Here's some crazy research for you. So a third of men, 33%, a little over a third, of men between the ages of 18 and 29 are not only single, but they're not actively looking for a partner. The same study said that by the year 2030, that 45% of women between the ages of 20 and 45 will be single. So I've got a question for the men because I see it all the time in my comments. Most of my comments are filled with guys saying we're done. We don't, we're not looking, we like our peace. I need some more talk from you guys. Tell me why you're done. Tell me why you don't want to have a partner in life. Tell me why it's more worth it to be single than to have a partner. Even if you weren't to remarry, just to have a partner. I mean, I've talked to a lot of men. I've got my answers, but I want to hear it in the comments. So please drop it in the comments. If he's not paying all of your bills, then you are not in any relationship with him. So if a woman insists on paying her own bills, even if she considers herself to be in a relationship with someone, according to this person, they're not actually in a relationship because he's not their sugar daddy. Why the hell would you give him a full access to you if he's the only person who benefits from that relationship? And how does that make sense? Men benefit just by being seen with you. Men, did you know that? You benefit just by being seen with a woman. Just by sharing your energy, your precious feminine energy with him and your beauty, you're giving them extra confidence and ego boost. <laughs> you're just giving them social and personal promotion for free just by giving them an access to you. And another thing is that why would you give him husband privileges if he is not even able to cover all of your bills? Some women actually don't like being dependent on men to pay their bills. They prefer to do it on their own, whether or not they're in a relationship with them or not. He's the only person that benefits from that, not you. Oh dear. Men fall in love by investing in you. And if you don't, let, don't make them invest in you, then sooner or later, they will stop respecting you. Let's hear it for transactional relationships, ladies and gentlemen. Is him paying your bills. It's just bare minimum. It's your non-negotiable. It's 2024 and we need to become a little bit more selfish. Remember, the moral of this story is, in order to be respected as a woman, you need to get paid. No. You want to know what fucking sucks? I'll tell you what fucking sucks. What sucks? <laughs> Shoveling a ton of gravel. That fucking sucks. Yeah, if you got lady the muscles. The whole time I'm shoveling, all I'm thinking is, who the are the women that want equal rights 
the women's movement. Who wanted to do the man's work? Because I fucking didn't. I'd rather be inside making sandwiches and serving iced tea. Fuck this <laughs> bullshit. I don't want She's to be through. equal. I don't want any part of being equal. <laughs> I will make sandwiches. I will cook dinner. I will wear an apron. I will clean house. I'll vacuum. I'll do whatever I got to do to keep from fucking shoveling rock. And the difference between TikTok is, and Facebook is after I get this shit done, I'm going to get on Facebook and brag about everything I accomplished and how fucking happy I am. But just know the truth. I'm pissed. I'm not happy. It doesn't make me feel good. No, no part of it. Don't want to do it. I can wear pants. I can wear a top that shows most of my body. And I continue to do so because of all the women who fought for that. Women no, have no, the right walk, women didn't fight for you to walk around looking like a whore, okay? That's not what they fought for. They fought for your right to vote, their right for your education, the right for you to play a sport. Do you feminism or low gas prices? Um, I guess low gas prices because ever since the feminist movement, it's been a lot harder for me to find a guy to pay my bills. And all of a sudden, I have to work and I have to do all these things. And I honestly don't want to work. I would rather stay in the kitchen. Mind you, I need some cooking classes, but I think I could take a couple cooking classes and make somebody really happy. Actions matter. This is what happens. You think, oh, it's fine. They just might not open the door for us because of all the raging feminists. But you can't act out. Society does change. There is no such thing as social engineering. People change their behavior. And guess what? Nine times out of ten, women end up in a really bad situation. Like, she can't get anybody to help her up. Those dudes aren't checking for her. They're not even going to look at her. They're going to ignore her. Um, yeah, we need help. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like non-stop. Like, let's stop acting out and let's act correct. And at least make the perception that we're not going to perpetuate negative behaviors. Come on. Like, set an example. Like, if you do see someone acting out, make sure to, like, respond accordingly. <laughs> but luckily, a woman did come rush over and help her up. But yeah, great point. Why is it that modern feminism just promotes this idea that absolutely nothing is a woman's fault ever? Even in her own life, her own choice, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's men. It's all men. And I get these comments all the time saying like, oh, you're shaming women because they got abused. Or you're shaming women because they got, you know, hurt by a man or whatever. You're shaming them like it's their fault. First of all, no, I'm not. It's not your fault that a man is evil and abusive. Okay, that's not your fault. You're not responsible for that. But you are responsible for yourself and the positions that you put yourself in. And me personally, if I was consistently choosing these absolute garbage men to date, marry, whatever it is, that are consistently abusing me, I think it's fair that you should self-reflect. Like, you can sit there all day long and go, men are horrible, men are trash, men are this. Okay, but is that helping you? Is that serving you? Is that mindset getting you anywhere? No. So instead, why don't you take a little responsibility? self-reflect and evaluate why is it that I keep choosing these horrible people and then correct that and do better for yourself and have a good life instead of whining and crying all the time that men are so horrible. Not all men are horrible. Not all women are good. But you can be good and you can make good choices. I don't know. I just feel like sitting here and telling women that nothing is their fault is not, it's not helping anyone. It's just not. And I know there's people that are going to sit there and go, that's not what's happening. Is that what's happening with every single person in the world? No, I'm not addressing every single woman in the world. I'm addressing the ones who think this way because there are women who think this way. And they live in my comment section. Every woman is capable of making better choices for herself. Don't be a victim. Don't waste your time sitting there blaming men for all your problems. Be smart. Make good choices. You're capable. Do better for yourself viral attention for sharing her regrets about ditching the idea of marriage and family. Now, her article in Business Insider reads, quote, I'm 38 and single, and I recently realized I want a child. I'm terrified that I've missed my opportunity. That woman's name is Melissa Persling, and she's revealing to Fox News Digital what she thinks caused her current situation. Listen. I feel 
unbelievably betrayed by feminism. I was constantly fed this idea that women can do everything. We don't really need men. Women can women can have the great career and and have the kids that they like and change the tires and do this. I mean, I grew up thinking and men are great, but like I can do all the same things. I do feel in many ways betrayed by that line of thinking. I kind of want to go back to some of those, some of those teachers and coaches and and say, what the hell did you mean by that? Because women can't do it all. I we can't. Katrina, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, I'm going to go deep here. So I have a lot of opinion on this, and I really think that feminism in some ways has really sabotaged women's happiness. And the reason I believe that is because we are asked to do all these different things, right? But then our nervous system goes whack. Like, I know for myself, I'm in work mode and then mother mode and then family mode, right? And so your system just completely goes out of whack, which is why I truly believe, and I found this quote and I thought it was so telling, is that the divine feminine is the rawest, wildest, and most honest mirror a man will ever encounter. The awakened man opens his heart and goes to battle. He will tame his dragons and face his deepest shadows, since he knows that deep within, her heart will guide him home. And I think that there is a beautiful balance between the feminine and the masculine energy. And I know that as a woman, regardless of what any woman says, I think she wants to feel safe with a man, and she wants to be able to feel her feminine energy, but it's very difficult to go into that space when you're trying to fulfill all these different roles, which is what I think this woman is feeling right now, which is what I think a lot of women, right, in very powerful positions are feeling. And then there's this idea that if you're powerful, you can't be, you know, a beautiful wife mm. or a beautiful mother. And so I think we need to go back to really the way God designed us to be, which is as women, we, we need men. And it makes for a beautiful balance. Chris, something that struck me about this is something that Katrina mentioned earlier, which is your influences start in the home. So my, my, the moral of this story to me was that she felt betrayed by her influences. But if she had been influenced a certain way in the home, then there wouldn't have been confusion. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. And, and I, I really like the points uh, you, you just made. I, I think that, um, you know, this is a little bit of a, a weird topic for me to talk about. But I, you know, what, we grew up with parents. I grew up with parents that had my brother and I, when they were in their early 20s, okay? And that was, a, that was their decision, that was great. Um, my wife, Lily, uh, decided to, uh, she, she's an entrepreneur. She built her business in her early 20s and early 30s, and we didn't have kids till we were in our mid-30s. And she struggled with this uh, early on a little bit, but mm -hmm. this is where I think, as a man, and as her husband and her protector, I take my personal responsibility to be her greatest advocate and her greatest cheerleader for everything that she's doing, everything that she's accomplished, everything she has to balance as a woman. Uh, and, I, and I think more men should take that responsibility. Not that I'm on this high horse or anything. I'm just saying I do think that it's a, the role of a man to do that. Suck. They are so dumb. Literally, at every age, so freaking dumb. And you know what? They don't even want to change. And now the world knows it. Thanks, feminism. So why do I think it's a problem of feminism versus boys? Let's start with when they're young. Boys and girls are different, but we live in a society that doesn't seem to want to acknowledge nor nurture those differences. And when they do... The future is female. <laughs> no. It, you know, it gives me hope. It's kind of sick. Got detention just for flicking up a girl's skirt. What? That's it. <laughs> Doesn't she know that's just boys being boys? Yeah, I mean, I've already accepted that as I grow up, I'll probably be harassed and even abused. Sorry. That's not what I meant. I think I grew up a little. Instead of finding healthy ways to encourage the differences in boys, we have largely female faculties that don't hesitate to tell them to sit down, sit still, pay attention, or it's the ADHD pills for you. It's like we want them to be girls. Well, and then they get to college. Well, why even go to college at all? 
men attending colleges has dropped to 40 percent in the past academic year. Men aren't even welcomed there. The very broad brush of feminism has painted every guy on campus as an evil participant of, of rape culture and the misogynistic patriarchy that's trying to keep women down. By teaching women to climb the corporate ladder and to date without intention. Why do some women have such an obsession with being on top? Families aren't being created. Families in which both mother and father are present. And then, having removed the male influence, they turn around and blame men for the problematic men that they've created. I'll let the man who said it best say it again. You uh, give them this message that it's okay to be a man. It's not okay. It's necessary. What the hell are we going to do? It just doesn't make sense to me how women are not being asked out on dates. Like, there are so many beautiful women, like, come on, like, just, just shoot your shot. But a lot of the things that the guys were telling me, and these were guys from the ages of, like, 19 to 40, was like, no, we don't want to intimidate a woman. If we see them on the street, like, we'll cross the road so that they feel safe. Oh, I do that. Um, no, we don't want to come across creepy. So I do see that, obviously, culture has really, like, removed this from the man, this kind of, like, the art of the chase. And then that, I think, in effect, is making more men pa passive. There's a two-part solution that I have to this dilemma. Number one, women need to stop shaming men for simply approaching them, whether he is attractive in her eyes or not. Yes, I'm calling you out, ladies. <laughs> Part two, I might get a lot of backlash for this, but more women need to approach. And just to be clear, ladies, I'm not talking about you just doing a a brief look at him or a super quick smile because those are such little hints that he might just think that you're being nice. me during the earthquake so that she doesn't get the ache. This is literally what men have to do. These are the hoops they have to jump through because of the ridiculous standards that women put on them on social media. Somebody commented and said, new ick, standing still during an earthquake. Somebody else said, what earthquake? I didn't feel shit. That is what you have to say. Men are not intimidated because you make money, sis. They're not intimidated. They don't want to deal with your attitude. They're not intimidated. They don't want to deal with you. Women think it's attractive to be a lot to handle. No, grow up. You are a burden. And that concludes today's discussion on MegTow Voice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on future videos. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next video.